Tabash is blunt. He says it as he sees it. He doesn't get into a whole lot of ambiguous stories. When he works through me, he uses my body as if it's his own. As Blair, I have no conscious memory of what he says to people. I know channels do work in different ways. In my case, it's really like I've just gone out of the room somewhere else. Where do I go? I go to spirit. I go to a place which is as real to me as being in this room is right now. I meet with my teachers, my guides, or sometimes I can just chill. There's always a few subtle changes. My voice is, is different. People have remarked over the years, I get very shiny when I channel. And when I've asked spirit, why, do, why does that occur? They say, God's light shines through your body. People also say, my eyes change. They can look brighter, more intense. They have been known to change colors sometimes. People feel a presence around, around, around Tabash. Some people get very emotional. You know, I've had people who just, when they're having personal sessions with Tabash, they come into the room, they automatically just burst into tears. Often people who never do that would do that. And it's just that alignment, that connection with the uh, source power is touching their souls in some particular way. He's funny, so he's got a really awesome sense of humor. Um, he's in meetings like this, he's apt to walk around you all and he might give you some little information. It's never gonna be intrusive, but you know, he always just likes to go up to people and have a little bit of a chat or, anyway, we'll see, see what the format, it's up to him, he decides. As I said to him, you know, it's funny, I, I, when I think about my future, it's, it's just I don't have any feeling about it, I just have this blank. And I said, you know, in the past I would have worried about that. But then it suddenly made me think, well, hang on a minute, that's what being in the present is really all about. And, you know, about two years ago, uh, three years ago almost, when my wife went into care, and I looked after her for seven years before she went into care. And I'm still working, but just around home. And I got, and I didn't realize, but I got myself to a place where I was not in a good place. You know, and I had a sense of, I didn't have a sense of the future, but I was looking at it from a, a negative perspective. And therefore it's just like, I didn't, I didn't care. You know, it was just like this big blank and who cares? And, and then yeah, now I can look at the blank and care. And, and so, so it just depends on the, it's all relative to your experience at the moment. And that's why I think we have to be careful about decisions that we make from, you know, that negative perspective or that, that traumatic place, because that's just that moment at that time. And even though you might think, I can't see beyond this, and regardless of whether you can't see beyond it, there is always more. You know, as T says, you know, we all have lots of futures basically, see. And I think it's to always keep that understanding that when we're in hard places, oh, this is just this place, this is just this view for this moment, for this situation, for that experience. And, and, and it's, even though it can be bad sometimes, it's about being able to realize, oh yeah, but I have choice. And I, and I have to just accept this feeling for the moment. And it, and it does pass. And, and yeah, so I just wanted to share that with you. So anyway, I'll bring T-Man through. I want to talk to you about grief, a very potent emotion and vibration, which can empower you, destroy you, encourage you, embrace you, align you. 
It's one of the most powerful emotional energies you can experience through your human nature. It can be brought through you in so many different ways. Of course, most humans relate to grief through the loss of somebody in their lives. But it can be related through a loss of a job, a relationship, an idea, a concept, a dream, a possibility. For one is forever relieving oneself of life as much as embracing life. So grief can be presented to you through so many different experiences. And you have to experience that emotion. So many don't grieve and they internalize it. And though that may not necessarily turn itself into something bad or negative, it rather mucks up your circuitry a bit, which makes it hard for you to emit vibration signals that are going to be productive for you. Many times people come to me because they have lost someone in their lives. And they often say, Tabash, how will I ever get over this? And I say, you won't. You can't. For you're not meant to get over anything. Experience it. It's natural. It's natural what you feel. It's natural what you will think. It's natural where you will stand with it. Your body will experience it. But your soul, it knows what to do. So there are some emotions through your human nature that go beyond any form of understanding or any form of resolution. So when you allow yourself to experience what you feel, your human nature will do what it needs to do and the God in you will look after you till at some point you will feel what you feel, but you will feel it differently. So if you look at the grief of the loss of somebody, that is love that you feel when you feel sad. That is respect in your grief, honor in your grief. It's an opportunity to allow yourself to honor the life of that individual, but also the agreement that you made with that individual. So if you try to get over it, then it is like you're trying to push aside the power of what that energy represents. So many people have had many life changes in their lives, forced upon them at times. And there's a grief in letting go sometimes of an identity, of a culture, of a country, the rules and systems, the ideas that go with all those things. And therefore, grief is a natural way of cleansing oneself. And of course, the way that you approach it is relative to your decisions. For remember, it is all your creation. And that's why some will beat the pillows and howl to the hills. And some will be silent and quiet within their way of it. And so it's important to find your own personal voice when it comes to what you are mourning for and grieving for. You may wish to write it down in a poem. You may wish to write it as a story. You may wish to cook a lot of cakes or eat a lot of cakes. But whatever you do, it's about being able to say, oh, hi, grief. You know, you are a part of my life at the moment. I allow you to be there. And I will be honest with you. And I will let you be a voice for me for a while. But then there will come a time when I don't need to have that voice anymore. And I know I'll never get rid of you. I know I just simply put you somewhere 
in the room of life. And I know you will be there. As you evolve in your idea of being God more, of course you begin to experience the emotions very differently because you begin to see life without your human emotions. And that's why there are some people who find it really, really hard to feel sad when someone passes. And they might try to conjure it up within them and they think, oh, there must be something wrong with me. You know, I'm repressing things or I'm you know, not a very nice person. What you're doing is you're feeling the bigger picture. You're realizing that oh, that soul's just gone home. Why would I feel sad? When you feel that connection with source, you're able to understand and feel the joy of what it is to be relieved of your human nature. Hmm. That makes me think this. Every day of your lives, as you become more involved in your self-development, that's what you're doing. You're relieving yourself of some more of your human nature. As you do that, then you're allowing more of the God nature in you to shine through. Therefore, enabling yourself to direct the aspects of your human nature which you want. As opposed to, oh, well, this is what I've come with. I better make the most of it. Isn't it nicer to think, oh, I've come with everything. And if I've come with everything, then I know that I'm going to keep exploring. And not just exploring my soul self, but all the attributes that I have in human nature terms. Your message to the world is your life. When you finish your message, you go home. You might be a tiny baby. You might be a young teenager. You might be a middle-aged individual. You might be an old man or an old woman. But when you finish your message, you go home. And so people say, oh, she or he went before their time. I said, no, they didn't. They just went home. They made that choice. Blair was a volunteer at his local hospice and used to watch all the families come to visit the people. And sometimes he could sense the soul's frustration that here's the family, you know. You're trying to do your best to go home. You are lying in your deathbed, as they say. And you have all around you these people. Don't go. Don't leave me. I still need you in my life. How could you do this to me? All those things. I'll never get over this. And as you're trying to do your best to go, you have all these people with their emotional needs, with, 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 with their demands of you. You know, no, you can't go yet. And that's exactly what you want to do. You want to go home. And yet, the human nature is around you. It's like someone's thrown an head over you. And one of the things that Blair noted was that when most people pass, they pass when everyone went out of the room. And then they came back. Oh, I should never have gone to the toilet. Oh, I should never have gone to eat Kentucky Fried Chicken. Oh, I should never have done this. And then it's like, oh, I feel so guilty. Dad wasn't there for me or wasn't, you know, I wasn't there for dad or mom or whatever. People have often said to me, oh, Tabash, you see, you know, I wasn't there for my father when he passed or my mother. And I said, well, he didn't want you to be there. That's why you weren't really there. Huh? They go. You have around you who you want to have around you when you pass. So all those people who buy expensive train tickets or flying to see dad or mom or whatever like that, and then they miss, and they go around carrying this guilt for the rest of their lives. Don't. And then you just go home, put the thought out, and just say what you want to say. Okay, and it gets back to that freedom that I was thinking before about. The grief that you will feel is also a way of remembering something within yourself. Now think of what I said before. You are all simply each other. 
So when someone passes from your life, what you've done is you've actually said goodbye to a part of you that is no longer necessary for you to align with. And the thing is that part can never be replaced because you don't want to replace that part of you. And so when you really allow yourself to think, right, well now I have to make all these other adjustments because I don't have to be under the influence of that karma anymore and that idea anymore and that feeling anymore and, and all that goes with being connected to people. And so this where when you say goodbye to self through that individual, what does it do? It automatically aligns you with the people around you. All right, who is in my life now? You know, who, who do I need to pay attention to now? And, and so, I know people have their own belief systems around passing and death, etc. But, you know, when you really get the concept of, you know, being God, then from our perspective, it's like you've gone from one room into another room. And, and, and you still have that alignment, you still have that connection. But the conversation becomes different. When you change your perspective of how you think, how you feel, how you live, you realize how liberating it is, how freeing up it becomes. When you are no longer bound by the rules and rituals of what you thought life was all about. Interesting, is it not? how so many people still fight the concept of such freedom. Human nature wishes to be liberated. But from what? Of course the answer is from their own human nature. But of course human nature is what created the rules of human nature. How can you abide by rules that are not natural to your human nature? or to your God nature. So now as you establish new routines, new patterns from source power, it's like one throws out the manual. Now where is the book? Let me follow it through. If I can do this, hey Leonard. <laughs> Throw the book away. And each day, just write what's necessary for you. So when you write what's necessary for you, you are the creator, the author of your own experiences. And by allowing yourself to be this author, you're also creating the characters that are in your story. You are establishing the plot of your story. But of course the story has no end, as I said earlier. The ongoingness of what you're all about. So many souls, when they pass from their physical bodies, when they get out there and they go, oh, damn, you know, I could have done this and I should have done that. Why didn't I see that before? Some, they can take their ignorance with them. It depends on what you feel, what you believe. You can get some who are so locked into routines and patterns that when they pass, they still take those routines and patterns with them. And they will not live in all eternity for that. But they'll have that moment where they have to experience their experiences on earth from a different perspective. And of course they will have teachers and guides and energies that will assist them and show them. And then they'll simply move into a lighter consciousness at some point. When you are God, and you live that vibration and energy, then what this does, it's like allows you to go to go and collect $200 or whatever the phrase is. So you go more direct into the energies. So you want to know what it's like in spirit? You want to know what it's like when you go to heaven? You want to know what you will feel? Well, that's you making the decision. You decide what you see, what you feel, what you experience. 
is based entirely on what your belief systems are. And yeah, you go into consciousness, but you're still making the decision about what you will feel, what you, how you will be embraced. And that never stops. So in that sense, if you think about it, you could say, right, if that's how it works, then I want to experience everything that is good and everything that is great and everything that is unlimited. Don't limit your experience. People ask me questions sometimes like, can you eat food in spirit? And I said, yeah, you can. And they go, well, how do you digest it? <laughs> Obviously, it's not a physio physiological experience. But say if you wanted a Big Mac and fries, you could create the reality of it. And you would eat it and you would have the sensation that you are tasting things and feeling things. You can drive a big limousine if you want to. You can do anything that you want. You can create whatever reality that you actually want. And so a lot of souls do that. They go out there and they create giant French fries and things just to see you know, what they can actually do. So it's like this power, it's like, whoa. And then after a while, they realize that I can use the power differently. I think about this. It's all very well talking about giant French fries, but it's just a metaphor for human nature thinking that they always got to create something big to prove that they can do something. In that sense of, if it's bigger, then it's got to be better or good or I'm powerful and such. And I think it's important to do that because what that does, it engages you with the understanding of how to organize energy, how to organize power. So that's why people create empires. They create estate portfolios. They create adventures. They're showing to themselves that I can do this. It's, it's a way of organizing energy, organizing power. And for a while that may happen. It may take many lifetimes, but invariably that soul will get to a point where they realize, oh, I just want to create a really nice day. Or I just want to create a place where I can walk or a nice relationship or simplicity. So you all get to this place it's so what I said before, in order to be something more, you have to know what it is to be nothing. So invariably, you all get to this place of nothingness where you just exist as consciousness. I don't need a label. I don't need a purpose. I don't need a reason. I can create because I can create. I can love because I can love. I can experience because that's what I can do. I no longer need to show anybody or prove anyone anything. I no, need to, no longer need to feel that I want to be recognized or to be identified in some way. Truth needs no publicity. So I simply stand in my vibration and I exist. Interesting. The more quieter you become, the simpler things occur. Often the more you can create. And often too, when you choose to just be, how much people do notice you. Whereas when you're trying to get their attention, they just don't want to see you. Whereas you just quietly get on with your life and do your thing. Good example. I always like to use Blair as an example. So, okay. He's doing a bodybuilding competition, either in September or in March next year. Something he's always wanted to do. So he'll be 60 next year. So he decided before he turns 60, he wants to do this. So he's been training big. Anyway, he's got these guys in the gym that he doesn't train with, but they train at the same gym. And sarcastically, in his mind, he calls them the gym gods. You know, they're buff, they've got big smiles, and no one talks to them because they don't talk to anyone because they rule the place, basically, you see. Anyway, so it's sort of people that you'd press yourself against the wall when they went down the stairs, <laughs> you know. <clears throat> so Blair's training one day. And all of a sudden, two of them come up to him. And they go, are you Blair? And he went, yeah, why? <laughs> he goes, oh, we've been watching you train. We think you're doing amazing. You know, you're getting really good results. And 
So they're just chatting to him, giving some pointers and stuff like that. And his male ego went like, hmm. <laughs> the gym gods have talking to me. I'm a gym god. You know, I'm going to strut down the stairs too. <laughs> but he felt motivated and inspired by these vibrations and these energies. And, you know, he laughed at himself because he didn't take it too seriously. But it's like, wow, you know, you never know who's looking out for you or watching you. So it just goes to show you've got to pay attention to what you're thinking, what you're feeling, what you're doing. Again, it's an environment that you put yourself in. So as souls, you've got to experience a vibration, an energy that encourages you to be more, do more, create more. But you find it in lots of different ways. What ways are you looking for as individuals? But to find the way, just quietly get on with your business. Just do your thing. Because that's what you want to do. You're achieving so you can find expression within yourself. And yeah, it's good to have an outcome to something but not to be over-involved in the outcome. Because if you get over-involved in the outcome, it changes the dynamics of things. And that's where I never believe in reaching for a goal. I believe in living life. And when you live life, and you have your intention, set the intention, establish the routine, but don't get caught up into the outcome. Don't say, I'm doing this because. So when people say, why are you doing a bodybuilding competition? And Blair says, because this is what I feel I want to do. I just feel I want to take myself to that level. I'm not doing it for a reason. I'm not doing it to prove anything to myself. I'm doing it because I know inside of me, there's that part of me that says, do this. So he's following that through. And he may never do it again. But sometimes in life, you get those ideas. You've got those feelings. I've got to do that competition. I've got to write that book. I've got to, you know, walk the Camino. And you feel something inside of you. And that's your higher nature saying to you, hey, check that out. There's something there for you. And, and then you investigate the options, the possibilities. So when you get a feeling about something, it's not saying you have to do this. And if you don't do it, your life will not be worth living. It's just saying, hey, check this out. And that's because your higher nature is always advising you. It's pointing you in a direction. It's giving you an indicator. Okay, look at this. Feel this. Explore that. Talk to that person there. But how often people, oh, I can't do that. Oh, I'm too shy to do that. Or oh, I'm not qualified enough to do that. Or oh, I'm not able enough to do that. But if you have the feeling and if you have the idea, then you are. There's no way you can experience anything like that if it's not within you to do so. And therefore, it's not the lesson, but the journey is to, oh, okay. Let's see if I can organize my, my vibrations enough to create environments enough that allow that to actually occur. And the moment you do that, then all the gym guys come along and go, hey, you're doing a good job. <laughs> and that motivates you and allows you to go to another level because you got the attention of some other level of yourself. So if you think about those guys in Blair's gym, they were just another level of himself. And so he attracted it to him. And so they talked to him, so that made him feel good about what he's doing. And it made him feel inspired and motivated. So now, you know, when they're in the gym, it's all like, good day, Blair. Okay, mates, how you doing? You know, and, and, and so therefore you made a link. You made a conscious alignment with your own power. And you could do that in the opposite way as well. So when you get the God vibe, then what you're able to do is to see that. You can see what you're doing. You are putting all these different formulas before yourself all of the time. And if you're wise enough to it, then you can see what you're doing, how to organize it differently, or how to eliminate that if it's necessary. And, and the best way to do that, obviously, is to stay conscious of who you are and what you're doing. I think people find, as they say, it's hard to stay conscious all of the time of your thoughts and of your feelings and all those sorts of things. Look, it doesn't mean that you have to make a concentrated effort. 
into paying attention all the time. You go crazy to do that. But what you do is you relax more with yourself. You start to listen to the way life is talking to you. And it speaks to you all the time. Hands up those who had a feeling that they had to come to this seminar today. I rest my case. <laughs> your honor. <laughs> so that's your soul saying, check this out. How many of you looked at that and thought there was a reason for you to be here? But that's not true. <laughs> There's no reason. Remember, you're here because it's a choice you've made. And, and so therefore, when you take away the reasons, then you realize there's more power in the fact that I'm, I'm here because my soul said I'm here, and my soul knows why I'm here. My human nature doesn't need to know why I'm here. My soul knows why I'm here. And so if I allow my soul to experience that, I know that my soul's gonna take on board what is necessary to take on board, and then when it needs to tell my human nature, it's gonna tell it that. And some of the stuff I hear today, someone's gonna go, huh? And I have to think about that, and then in three weeks later, I'm gonna go, oh yeah. And other times it's going to hit me straight away, and you're going to go, that's why I'm here. And I would say, no, you're just here. You're here. You're just gathering. You're gathering vibration. You're gathering words. You're gathering experience. You're gathering each other. You're gathering connections. And what you're going to do is you're going to take all that you've gathered, and you're going to formulate a plan for yourself. And you're going to turn that plan into a life experience. And it might be just a thought or a feeling or a person or an event or an outcome, but you're going to take that. You know, humans talk about, you know, I want to serve more. I want to, what's the purpose of serving more? How should I do this? There it is in everyday life stuff, in life. So it's so important to see the simplicity of that. And yes, you will be drawn towards major experiences where you're going to offer up the power the healing that you have, the thoughts that you have, the aptitudes and abilities that you have. You're going to offer that up because your soul is saying to you, yeah, I'm going to do that. But because I know I'm God, I could do that better now. And, and I'm going to know more and feel more. And, and also, too, I'm going to feel an alignment more because I realize that I've got the back end of all these people in the room, even though I may never see them again or talk to them ever again, it's there because we made an alignment. So we made an agreement with each other's vibrations. And that agreement is going to go through you and always will be with you. And even though you will put the experience down in human nature terms, you will not put the experience down in God terms. It will always be there and you will always align to it. And some of it you will remember more and some of it you won't remember. I mean, think about if you look at right now, just in your thoughts, think about a person that you always remember from your childhood. And straight away, that's a poignant individual who's made a difference to you in some way. That could be positive or negative, but it's made a difference to you in some way, and you still remember it. That teacher or that person or that word that someone said or that comment or whatever. And just ask yourself again, particularly if it's a negative thing, am I visiting that too often? Am I allowing myself to be affected by that vibration and that energy? And if you are, Right now in your thoughts, just think, I choose to make peace with that now and let it go. The simplicity of relieving yourself of something is just as simple as that. I think again, human nature has made organizing consciousness very, very complicated through too much of the thoughts and the ideas and the processes. And certain things are useful to a point, but then invariably as you become God more, you realize how simple it is. And then they're just, okay, I'll let that go. I put that down now. And I see it, people, let it go, let it go, let it go. Oh, let's hang on, let's pick it up again. <clears throat> Parable. <clears throat> Man with bag of sticks. Walking down the road, very heavy. Man without a bag of sticks. Walking down the road, looking very che cheery. Comes and meets man with big bag of sticks. A man with bag of sticks looks very wise to the one without the sticks. And he says, man with sticks, what is enlightenment? And the man looks at him and he just puts his bag down. 
who stands up. And the old man, the other man goes, oh, okay, got that. And then he goes, yeah, but what comes after enlightenment? So the man picks his bag up and carries on. <laughs> it's all in here and in here. It's all in the way you perceive things. You can carry your life and all its emotions if they're negative, like they are a feather, where they're like a slight irritation, but you hardly feel it. Or you can carry it like it's a concrete block on your shoulders and you feel the weight of your experience. And there's no wrong way, right way about it. People could, oh, well, obviously the feather is the right way. And I said, it just depends on, on, on what you need to evolve with. So some people evolve through the heaviness. Some people evolve through the lightness. Invariably, you don't have to evolve from any of those ways. Why? Because you are evolved. You just exist. So comes a point where you neither have the feather or the concrete. You just live. And it's that living energy that allows you to explore the multidimensional aspects of yourself that are presently available to you. And this is what human nature is moving more and more into as you move into all these different realms of understanding. You're beginning to experience life on a conscious level as multi-dimensional beings of energy. And that's where you realize that in regards to your own development as spiritual beings, you have to go deeper because you realize your human nature is very limited in what it can offer your soul. And so when you seek for more truth, more understanding, more direction, rather than go to your human nature and human experiences, you actually have to go within yourself more. And that's where you're able to visit the dimensions that carry the information that is necessary. Because your human nature cannot carry that information. Your soul will carry it. So as you develop more and more and go deeper into your soul through your meditations or things that you explore, it's offering you up that opportunity. It, it, it widens your horizons, as they say. Using IT technology, it's the difference between having the old dial-up and now broadband. So you suddenly have access to, to more information. So as souls, you're downloading all this different hardware and therefore accessing more files than ever before. So as you relieve yourself of the idea of your human nature as you, embrace the idea of yourself as God nature, then you are accessing the files that you host in your multidimensional selves. And it's not about just randomly flipping through the files either. It's about being conscious of what's necessary. So when you need superhuman strength, you go to the part of you that has it. If you have an important business meeting coming up, you go to the part of you that has the way you need to be about that. If you're fatigued and you need more energy, well, then you go to the part of you that has that energy. So you've got all these different aspects of self that are carrying information that's really useful for you in your everyday life. And you're only using a very, very small aspect of who you are. So this is just one dimension, you see. And Blair was driving up to see his wife one day. And he's thinking about this. And he thought, well, that means that if Kay is a multidimensional being of energy, there's only one dimension of her that has Alzheimer's. And the rest of her is actually fine. So he thought, okay, I'll think about that. So he projected to her spirit that he's coming up to visit and he wants to align to parts of her that are more cognitive. And when he got up there, she was really clear. She had clarity in her eyes. She's in a wheelchair, she has to be fed. But she looked at him and, and she put his, her hands to his face like this, like she knew him. And, and, and so, you know, think about how you could utilize this. You look at your own misery gut stuff in your life. You know, look at your health issues, look at your financial issues, look at everything. Oh, that's just one aspect of myself. You know, it's like there's only one aspect of you that feels the grief for the person of your father. And there's all these other aspects that don't. And, and so it's about, okay, I'm going to make sure I use that to assist me and guide me. I've got to call upon. Now, you do it quite subconsciously. And as people go, oh, I seem to call upon something within me. 
or their inner strength or whatever people say. But what you've done is your soul has thought, oh, I know what to do. So it's aligned you to a part of you that allows you to move forward, to bring through some idea or energy, to help you see something through, to give you confidence or clarity. And that's where your higher nature is aligned with your human nature. And it's inspired you. And that's unconsciously. Can you imagine what you could do consciously when you can align with whatever your energies are needed? What self would you like to call upon that's useful to you? Trust self, yes? What would you like? What self would you like to call in to help you in your life? Trust, trust. Um, understanding. understanding, okay. Confidence. Confidence. Um, my creativity. Good, yes, and communication. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> so think about yourself as a multidimensional being of energy. What self would you like to call in that you think, this would be really useful to me right now? God self, excellent. Clarity. Clarity. Yes, right now, energy. Energy, good. <laughs> yes. Patience. patience. Yeah. All day. How many people want patient selves? How many people want? <laughs> okay, have it now then. <laughs> it's all yours to have. What about people who want well being selves? Health and well being selves. How many people want? You all do. Come on. <laughs> Health and vitality and financial strength. Good. Um, spiritual enlightenment selves. I'm at peace with my parents selves. I'm at peace with my children selves. I'm at peace with myself self. Good. Higher self. Here's a good one. I want to bring in my self that forgives everything. Nobody? <laughs> it, is a, it is that simple. You know, imagine if you could go, you know how you have these drive-in things where you'll get fast food and you don't have to get out of your car? Imagine if you had a well-being thing like that. You can get in your car and you just go to a place where you just, you know, have a fast food sort of well-being energy. I'll just have a um, self-development self, please, with a side of wealth and health and well-being. <laughs> Would you like a party pack, sir? <laughs> super size, yeah. Would you like to super size that? <laughs> How many want the super size energy of life? Okay, you call it in. But then remember too, what that does, that you determine that. You determine exactly what that's going to mean to you. Because what's super size to someone else is different to somebody else. It's all relative. You know, enlightenment comes in lots of different ways. You know, you can have spiritual enlightenment, but to enlightenment, some people is knowing that they can have a safe place to sleep at night or to know that they can drink clean water or do not be afraid of their husband who beats them up. There's so many different ways of what enlightenment is. To us, it means to be in light of your life. So when you are in light of your life, you've got into the room of life and you turned all the lights on. And there you see it. There it is. All of my life. Everything. And none of it is ever going to go away. It's all going to be there. But what has happened is because I'm God, I see it differently. And because I see it differently, I realize I have choice. I don't have to be affected by that. And if my misery gut stuff is somewhere in the corner and it's trying to get my attention, I'm not going to ignore it. I will acknowledge it, but then I don't have to go over there. I can just acknowledge it. And by acknowledging it, you realize Everything has its place. But you don't have to go and have breakfast with it. Let it be there. Because when you let it be there, who's in charge? You are. And then you determine just exactly what relationship you're going to have. 
So that's exactly the position that all souls on this planet are in at this point. You are deciding the relationship you are having with all of yourselves. And when you come at it from that God part of you, then you can be extremely selective in what you're selecting. Extremely aware of who you want to relate to, how you want to relate to it. And then you develop that relationship in your own terms. And I do not feel that is a hard thing to do because you all have structures in your lives, which means that you know every day how you're going to portray yourself. So when you know what the systems are, then it's simply a matter of inviting in the aspects of self that go with those systems. And then you start to look at what is the relationship that I have with that part of me. How many people here have a job they do not like? So you've got to look at your relationship with that part of you. And you've got to think, okay, if I create a better relationship with that part of me, then I can start organizing things differently. Because what's going to happen is if I don't like it, then that part of me is going to keep on relating to me. It's like an overstayer. Or it's like a gate crasher in a party. So, so what you do is that, you can, okay, you're here. I accept you're here. That's cool. So you stay, but just don't eat all the food in the fridge. <clears throat> but there's always a point where you realize, oh, it's got to go. But you don't let it go with negativity. You go up to it and say, hey, you know, thanks for coming. You know, you were the life of the party for a while. I really enjoyed, you know, connecting with you. But I need you to know, this party's over. <laughs> you know, so you're going to have to find some other party somewhere else. So what you do is that you encourage the things you don't like by accepting them. And in the accepting of it, you can then change it. It'll start listening to you. You try to ignore it, say, I don't like you, I'm out of here. And it's going to keep trying to get your attention time and time again. I'd like to talk to you a little bit about creation consciousness. How it works in regards to living on this planet. When the force that you know as God created this consciousness of Earth, there were 12 waves of souls that first came onto this planet, which helped to create all that became this planet. So what I like to call them is first family, second family, third family, up to twelfth. All beings who are light workers and are aligned to consciousness in a very powerful way tend to come from first family. So first family energy were the first group of souls that ever came into, at that time, light bodies. So they were not bodies as you know them today. And they still had the alignment with the God energy. So they were not permanently housed in the physical body. They could come and go at their leisure. And so they created the plants, the animals. They created pretty much everything. So those people who feel enormous affiliation with the planet and feel like they are custodians with the planet, so those who feel that, please put your hands up. A lot of first family energy. So you knew the earth at its very beginning. And that's why you feel so sad when you see the way that things are being treated. Because you have the memory of the pristine vibration and pristine energy. And you feel this great sense of responsibility and when you look at the way that some other people treat the earth and its energies, it goes beyond your thoughts. It goes even beyond your feelings. It's just hard for you to imagine that people would need to treat the world in such a way. And so you often become advocates, you know, for the planet itself. As time progressed beyond wealth consciousness, what occurred was that there became a denser energy that was created. So the souls, after 12th consciousness, became a lot more involved in the human nature experience. Now, that's not saying that they weren't evolved in their own particular way, but it got to a certain point where 
It's like anything. You get further away from the light, you can't see enough. So as you get further and further away, then your influence is more through the density of your human experience until invariably the only way to become once again aligned to spirit was for your bodies to die so that therefore you could just once again be pure consciousness. And of course, as history went on, then humans got so caught up into the human experience through the history that they were created. And this is how karma was created. So you were created a sense of issues, environments that you'd explored and you became over involved in those experiences. So therefore, through many, many, many lifetimes, you established ways of resolving those issues. Or once you resolved issues, choosing to serve in some particular way so that therefore you could go on and turn some more lights on. And so yourselves now is what you're doing. You're turning more lights on. And as you turn more lights on, you have to be very, very clear about what you need to see before you turn that light on. So the scene, first of all, goes on within yourself. And that's where when you align to your God nature, that is the ultimate light bulb, basically. To align with your God nature is not an arduous task. Sometimes people could just affirm, I am God, mind, body, and spirit. You can find your own words, your own need to align with that source vibration. Just close your eyes, please. <clears throat> In your thoughts, just think of the word God. Just have it there. You don't need to feel anything. You don't need to think anything. Just have that word there. Now, as you think that word, automatically think of a color that comes into your thoughts straight away. Now allow that color to just flow through you. Allow that color to expand beyond your physical body. And now blend that color with all the other colors in this room. See that in your thoughts. Fill the room with that color. Experience what you experience. Feel what you're feeling. Feel the power of that color. Now think about your life right now. And take that color and send it to some part of your life that you want at this point. Use it. Use the energy, use the vibration that you created. Now take what you've used and think about someone in your life that you would like to share that with. And imagine you just go up to that person and embrace them in your thoughts. And feel the energy that you are allowing that person to become more than they are. I think of the word freedom. And as you think of the word freedom, feel that energy going through your body.
and allow yourself to experience the vibration of freedom. And think about the ways in your life that you would like to be free. And reach for those ways. They might be an experience or a person or an idea or sensation or a connection. Think for a moment how you may not feel you are free in your life and then decide that you are. In your thoughts, I am God. I am God. I am God. Now count to three and just say it. One, two, three. Say it a bit louder. A bit louder. Say it like you're making a big announcement. I am God. Say it with love. I am God. Say it like you're telling the news regions. <laughs> Say it like you're telling yourself. Say it like it's the best thing you've ever said in your life. Say it like you're telling God. Now just say it in the way you want to say it. <laughs> you can open your eyes. I think it's such a time to be extremely sensitive to what you're thinking and what you're feeling and what you're doing. You have to be extremely sensitive to your own experience. Because when you're sensitive to your own experience, there's a big knowing in that sensitivity. And like I said earlier on, sometimes it's what you don't know that tells you what you do know. And when people, and I get it, I understand human nature's need. I've got to understand that. Therefore, by understanding it, I can make sure I don't have to go through that anymore. But that comes about by being conscious of where you're standing. Knowingness doesn't necessarily mean you make things better. I've seen lots of people with lots of knowledge and their lives are shit. Excuse the French. <laughs> <laughs> knowledge gives you an opportunity to observe. And in your observation, it allows you to feel on a different level. But a lot of people can take knowledge and turn it into something that can create a lot of conflict. Humans even have a phrase, ignorance is bliss. So when you get into knowing, you still have to manage it. You still have to organize it. You still have to have some systems around your knowing. But you also have to live what you know. And it's the living that makes the difference. Because we can all gather and gather and gather. But if we're not putting it into our lives, how is it that you can really say you know? And you know through your experiences. Whatever you pay attention to becomes your life, you see. And yet it is just life. There's the simplicity of it. You know, what your dad created was a choice. But there are circumstances that made him create those choices. And it's not about what took him to that place. He took him to that place. You take yourself to whatever place 
you're actually creating. Regardless of what the circumstances are, the circumstances were just the catalysts that gave you that opportunity to make those choices. And that's why, you know, you can't really measure life in the terms of good or bad or right or wrong. And I mean, human nature does that. There's no such thing as bad people or bad experiences. There's just life. There's just experiences. But human nature puts their labels onto it, you see. Your dad's a wondrous soul, a beautiful God who made a choice. And okay, yeah, through that choice, he's created circumstances and situations. Years and years ago, this person comes to see me. And <clears throat> she had issues with her father. And her father had left the family like 30 years before. And then it was discovered that father was dying of a terminal illness. And so all the children brought him home. And they said, oh, Tabash, it was the most beautiful thing. We all healed. We shared. We made wonderful stories. And I looked at her and I said, that's a really sad story. And she looked at me and she said, what do you mean? I said, it's sad because you waited 30 years and waited before he was dying before you did it. You know, if you had done it 30 years before and sorted your stuff out, then you would have had a complete different thing. Why do people wait until dad is dying or, or, or circumstances like that? And then people say, oh, I feel so guilty. I know I should have done it before. Well, why didn't you? Oh, well, you know, life got busy and, you know, uh, uh, probably he didn't want me to or she didn't want me to. Or I said, that's an excuse. That's all about you. That's not about anybody else. So if you're not doing something, that's not because of anyone else. That's because of you and your thinking and your feelings and your attitudes. And so, you know, humans have this blame game. You've got to stop all that. That's not you being God. That's you getting caught up into the human nature stuff again. And you'll just keep on doing that until at some point you get it. But I mean, how many more lifetimes do you need to create before you do that resolution stuff, you see? There's so much life to give to each other every day. You know, and giving life to each other, it could just be a thought away or a feeling away. Sometimes people come onto this planet thinking they're here to be pack mules, you know, carrying things around with them, plodding around, feeling the weight of things. No. The God energy, when you were created, created you for joy for great happiness, for wonderful success, for prosperity, for clarity. And yet human nature has turned life into rather a dangerous place and a dangerous experience, which you're trying to overcome. But remember what I said to before, it is human nature that has done that. And with all that you know, even within your soul reality, you're still doing it sometimes. You know, you're still allowing yourself to make a little hurdle for yourself. And that's a choice. This thing humans have a phrase, uh, no pain, no gain. That's absolute rubbish. Absolute rubbish. It's all about the gain. And you do not need to hurt in life. But humans have been very good at teaching each other that you do through history or if you don't do it yourself, someone else is going to do it to you. And if that occurs, it's because you're still accepting that that's a concept, that's a belief within yourself. Oh, well, it's just the way life works and you have to go through this stuff. No, you don't. You do not have to go through pain or hurt or loss or anything. The moment you really get being God, then you step away from that karmic vibration in regards to retribution. Because karma is just the deals of life. But you put your own emotional concept onto it. And therefore, as I said earlier, you turn it into an environment. So each life is an environment that you're involved in. 
So when you're approaching it from the God in you, then the vibration shifts. And therefore, you move beyond the need for any form of disharmony or distress or dis-ease that humans create for themselves. For many decades now, humans have been more and more involved in the development of the nature of God. And now as it comes to you more and more on a conscious level, what has occurred is collectively there's a greater energy, a greater amount of people who get it, who know it and understand it. And that collectivity is shifting and changing the vibration. There are more people on this planet now who get the God consciousness than don't. And all of you have had something to do with that. All of you have made that difference because you decided in your own way to turn a light on. And the moment you did that, you shifted consciousness. So if you just do this more in your own way, as we were saying before, be God more in your own way, then you're going to make an even greater difference. And there's you saving the world, changing consciousness. And of course you will be directed in your own ways to things that you specifically are aligned to. And that's where it's not about issues or discrepancies or leaving things alone. But it doesn't mean go searching and digging either. It's to know when, just, yeah, that's been done there. Don't need to do that again. But if you know, you know, like with your dad, it's like it's just there. There's something not quite finished. you got to follow that through. And okay, sometimes it's not a tangible thing. Sometimes it's just, I've got to follow through in here or in here or in here, whatever. It's about allowing yourself to explore you know, what you feel, what you feel is the way to approach that. And the moment you open up to the realms of that, what you also align to is us. So what we do is that we give you a vibration. We give you a frequency. We allow yourself to be open to the power of suggestion. So we are suggesting concepts and ideas and feelings. You will never ever, and this sounds odd, what I'm about to say, you will never get an answer from God. You will never get an answer from Spirit. It's impossible because you're the one who decides what you choose to create. You decide. So if you say to God, hey God, what is the answer to this situation? God says, sorry, I can't do anything for you. But if you say, hey God, can you give me more power of life? Can you give me more encouragement? Can you give me more energy? Can you give me more mentoring? God's going to go, absolutely, here, have it all. And then the part of you that is the creator takes that information and then turns it into your experience, your answer. It's always worked that way. So you can't be separate from anything. You have to be it. If you're saying God will get it sorted, then you're separating the vibrations. It's like we were talking before. You can't be a part of something. You know, you have to be it to know it. So that's where, with the knowing that you have, find your ways of living that vibration. And what you will do is that by living that vibration, that will allow you to walk in a certain way, but you will not walk that same way for the rest of your life. So you're always learning to walk in different ways. So for a while, you do it in a certain vibration. You know, so as a man, you might walk with your female vibration for a while, and then you kick into your male power until invariably you might bring it in and you just walk in your God power. So it's always about allowing yourself to think, okay, which road do I feel I have to walk at this particular point? Is that the road that I need to walk? Or do I need to change that vibration? You know, and you, people feel this time and time again. They suddenly feel a shift of energy. I just don't feel the same anymore. I just don't think the same way anymore. I don't relate the same way. I just even, the way I walk isn't the same way I walk anymore. Well, I hope you don't walk like that. And so, so it, it's about realizing you're forever redefining 
the way you're experiencing life, exploring life, but also knowing yourself. So you have these different aspects, as we said earlier, that are going to walk with you, but also walk as you, because you're allowing that vibration to come through you. At the end of the day, it's just a form of channeling. You know, you're just channeling energy, channeling a higher aspect of yourself, channeling consciousness in some particular way. That's why, how can you really look in a mirror and go, let's see who I am? You know, because you will see something different all of the time, or feel something different all the time. There's many here, I know, who when they look in the mirror, when they look at it, they don't even think of that as themselves. They just see what they see. So you're just watching your body. Oh, that's my body. But actually, what I'm actually seeing is coming from something completely different. And so the more you do that, the more you realize is that you're seeing yourself through yourself as God. And there are times when you can try this exercise. It's really interesting. When you stand in front of a mirror and you keep looking long enough, you start seeing different faces. And that's other lives that you've had. And so, you know, if you had people stand there like a woman, and suddenly she sees a picture of a man with a red beard and, and, and a curly hair. So you're seeing a previous incarnation that you've actually had. And, and you know, it's not going to be like a whole montage of things, but you look, you know, long enough, you begin to see this. So it freaks people out. You know, they think there's some spirit behind them or something like that, but it's not. You're, you're allowing yourself to experience yourself as a multidimensional vibration, and therefore you're bringing memories in so if you do do that, you see that, then in your thoughts, just ask, oh, who was I? Just see what comes up. And, and you know, questions are really important. Oh, anything I need to know? And it might go no or yes. And if it says yes, okay, what do I need to know? It will tell you. And, and so, so don't you know, hang out for a big conversation, you know, which is you know, what do people do. You know, they start asking like 40 questions. So, so you know, keep it easy. You might want to record it. You know, have that experience. Try that. It's just a simple way of seeing yourself as a multidimensional. I mean, already many people, you know, they've been watching Blair's body and they can see the light and the energy around, you see. So the more you concentrate on something, the more you realize, I'm just watching vibration, I'm just watching energy. You could do the same for yourself. You know, when you look at yourself in a mirror and you look you know, through your third eye area and you start seeing your own colors. You see your vibrations, you see your frequencies. When you see these things, another good thing, oh yeah, I accept this, this is easy. This is harmony. This is balance. This is power. This is life. This is me as God, being God more. You're extraordinary souls and extraordinary beings. We never go away. We're always there. And so just always know that. You know, we're only a thought away, a feeling away. You know, in the Christian Bible, it says, Ask and ye shall be given. Well, it's true. You know, you just put the thought out. It's there. You know, it's like when you want to turn the TV on to find your program, you switch it on. And when you switch it off, it doesn't mean the program stop. The commercials are still going. Everything is still happening simultaneously. So that's what you are, you know? And, and so when you turn off your energies, everything's still happening. Life is still occurring. All your power is always still there. And when you go to your sleep at night and you leave your bodies when you go to sleep, you're just going to different levels of yourself, to experience, to explore, to have information. So before you go to your sleep, just say to your, to your human nature, okay, this is what I'm doing, and this is what I'd like to experience, this is what I want to ex uh, explore. Everybody. And, and be you know, more and more conscious of that all of the time. All right, I'll bring Blair back into his body. Enjoy your regression. I'll be hovering. I love you, I love you. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. Geraldine, thank you. Okay. Everybody. Good, good.